This video is a general step-by-step -step guide for running an R&D Systems Quantikine QuickKit ELISA. QuickKit ELISAs offer a shortened protocol of under 90 minutes with a single wash step for the detection of proteins in various sample types. QuickKit ELISAs use plates pre-coated with an anti-tag antibody. For more information on QuickKit ELISAs, visit rndsystems.com slash quickkit. In this video, we're running a human TNF-alpha quantikine quick kit ELISA to determine human TNF-alpha concentrations in serum and cell culture supernates. This kit is for research use only and not for use in diagnostic procedures. There are a few important things to keep in mind before we begin. First, some proteins are detectable in saliva, so it may be important to wear a face mask to prevent contamination. Refer to the precautions section in your kit booklet for specifics. Also, be sure to wear personal protective equipment and refer to the safety data sheet on our website prior to use. Finally, protocols vary by kit and sample, so read your kit booklet carefully before you begin and during each step for specific instructions. This kit is validated for cell culture supernates, serum, and plasma samples. We recommend that all samples are assayed immediately after they are collected, but samples can be frozen for future use. If you haven't done so already, take some time to think about how you'll set up your plate. In our plate, the standard curve will be set up in duplicate in strips 1 and 2, and our controls and samples in duplicate in strips 3 and 4. This is also where you can consider running additional dilutions of your samples. Follow the recommended sample dilution factor in the sample preparation section of your kit booklet. If a recommended dilution is not listed, samples can be run neat. Multiple dilutions are recommended for unknown samples. Many cytokines, such as TNF-alpha shown in this video, are expressed at a very low abundance in serum and plasma from healthy individuals, and will likely fall below the standard curve. To prepare reagents, first bring all kit reagents to room temperature. To prepare your wash buffer, add 10 milliliters of wash buffer concentrate to 240 milliliters of deionized or distilled water in a graduated cylinder to yield 250 milliliters of wash buffer. Mix gently. Next, prepare your antibody cocktail. Reconstitute the human TNF-alpha capture antibody concentrate with 400 microliters of the specified diluent. Gently mix to ensure complete reconstitution. Avoid vigorous mixing and let rest on the bench top for a minimum of five minutes. Next, in a 15 milliliter conical tube, add 300 microliters of the reconstituted capture antibody concentrate and 300 microliters of the detection antibody concentrate to 5.4 milliliters of the specified diluent. This produces 6 milliliters of antibody cocktail. Avoid vigorous mixing. Next, prepare your human TNF-alpha standard. Refer to the vial's label for specific reconstitution volume. Reconstitute according to the kit booklet. This reconstitution produces a stock solution of 20 nanograms per milliliter. Gently mix the standard to ensure complete reconstitution and let rest for a minimum of 15 minutes prior to making dilutions. It's time to create the standard curve. Pipette 50 microliters of the standard into the 2000 picogram per milliliter tube. Then add 450 microliters of the calibrated diluent into the same tube. This creates the high standard. Vortex gently to mix. Check your kit booklet to ensure you have the right volume and diluent. Next, pipette 200 microliters of the appropriate calibrator diluent into the remaining tubes. Use the high standard to produce a seven point standard curve. Be sure to mix each tube thoroughly by very briefly vortexing. If you don't have a vortexer, you can lightly tap the side of the vial or pipette up and down. Try to minimize foaming and bubbles. Change pipette tips before transferring to the next tube. The calibrator diluent serves as the blank. Blank wells contain zero standard and are treated identically to assay wells. They serve as the non-specific binding control for all assay reagents. In this assay, we're using the kit-specific R&D Systems QC Controls catalog number QC259. Check your kit booklet for the analyte-specific controls. These should be reconstituted according to their lot-specific certificate of analysis and analyzed as is, without dilution. If you're not using R&D Systems QC Controls, we recommend formulating your own control. Once you've prepared your samples and reagents as directed in the previous sections, it's time to run your quick kit ELISA. We recommend that all samples, controls, and standards be assayed in duplicate. Remove excess microplate strips from the plate frame, return them to the foil pouch containing the desiccant pack, and reseal. We recommend labeling your plate strips. First, add 50 microliters of standard, control, or sample to each well. Then add 50 microliters of the antibody cocktail per well. It's important to follow this order and use consistent pipetting technique. Avoid contact with pipette tips and the solution in the well when adding the antibody cocktail. 
When all samples and solutions have been added to the plate, cover it with the provided adhesive strip and ensure it is completely sealed. Incubate the plate for one hour at room temperature on the shaker at a 0.12 inch orbit at 500 plus or minus 50 RPM. In the last five minutes of your incubation, prepare your substrate solution. Mix together color reagents A and B in equal volumes. This substrate solution must be protected from light and used within 15 minutes. It should remain colorless until added to the plate. 100 microliters of the solution is required for each well. Next, aspirate each well and wash by filling each well with 400 microliters of wash buffer using a squirt bottle, manifold dispenser, or auto washer. Complete removal of liquid at each step is essential for good performance. Washing with a multi-channel pipette is too gentle and not recommended. We recommend adding a 30 second soak period after adding the wash buffer. Wash a total of three times and after the last wash, remove any remaining wash buffer by aspirating or decanting. Then invert the plate and blot it against clean paper towels. Next, add 100 microliters of substrate solution to each well. Remember to protect the substrate solution from light. Now incubate for 20 minutes at room temperature on the bench top. Next, add 50 microliters of stop solution to each well. Stop solution should be added to the plate in the same order as the substrate solution. It is important to quickly dispense the stop solution into the well at a 45 degree angle so that the color in the wells changes completely from blue to yellow. If the color in the wells is green or the color change does not appear uniform, gently tap the plate to ensure thorough mixing or place the plate back on the shaker. As a last resort, you can use a pipette tip to individually mix each well, but this may result in a loss of volume and could impact your results. Now you can collect your results. Determine the optical density of each well within 30 minutes using a microplate reader set to 450 nanometers. To evaluate your data, first subtract the average of the blank wells from all of the wells. If wavelength correction is available, set it to 540 or 570 nanometers. This will correct for optical imperfections in the plate. Readings made directly at 450 nanometers without correction may be higher and less accurate due to slight imperfections in the plastic of the 96 well ELISA plate. Plot your standard curve and read controls and unknowns off of the standard curve. The blank wells should not be incorporated into the standard curve. This concludes our video guide for running an R&D Systems Quantikine Quick Kit ELISA. For more helpful protocols, subscribe to our YouTube channel. For more information about R&D Systems Quick Kit Elizas, visit rndsystems.com slash quickkit or contact us.